The 23rd Annual Performance Report of the Justice Law and Order Sector, JELOS, has been launched. There are 18 institutions under JELOS, including the judiciary, the police and prisons. The Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, Major General Kaindo Tafiri, used the occasion to attack the media, accusing the journalists of the campaigning government after Parliament passed the mobile money tax bill that seeks to levy a tax of 0.5% on withdrawals for all the people using mobile money. I would like to appeal to the press to stop the campaigning our attempts at uh, increasing revenue. Because when you start the campaigning, the few taxes we impose on the population in order to enhance our capacity to provide these services, then you are asking for, you want to eat your, your steak, but you don't want us to cook it or roast it. Dutch Ambassador to Uganda, Hank Jan Becker, who chairs the group of jealous development partners, raised some concerns in regard to the rule of law. The law does allow the use of proportional violence if there is resistance to an arrest, but the moment a person is arrested, that violence has to stop. In the scale, the intensity, the type and the outcome of the violent response of the security forces have been well documented. The leadership of various security institutions have acknowledged that lines were crossed. But so far, however, we have not seen arrests or prosecutions. I promise you that we shall endeavor to improve where we've done well and also to address the concerns you've expressed. I would also like to take this opportunity to remind you that uh, we are developing uh, democracy. We've only been at it for 30 years. So please don't judge us from the standards and uh, the glasses, the lenses of uh, Britain, United States, uh, Netherlands, who've been at it for the last uh, 300 or so hundred years. The consensus is that understaffing is the biggest challenge to the efficiency and effectiveness of the judiciary. The latest report shows that the judiciary has a backlog of 60,061 pending cases as distributed in the divisions of the High Court, with the Civil Division topping the list with 22,322 cases, criminal 11,254 cases, and corruption 256, land 16,819, family 4,074, commercial 3,712, International Crimes Division 66, execution 1,558. This huge case backlog has contributed to the congestion in prisons with hundreds of suspects on remand. The total capacity of Uganda's prisons is 18,000 inmates, but there are 52,000 inmates across the country. According to Chief Justice Bart Katurebe, the backlog will not be cleared unless President Yorim Seven appoints more judges to the bench. In 2009, Parliament recommended the appointment of at least 80 judges to the High Court, but Uganda has only 54 judges. Today, there are about 10,000 cases pending in the land division, and there are only five judges. That means every judge there has about 2,000 cases pending in front of him. Now, even if this judge was so efficient and he disposed of a case every day, including Saturdays and Sundays and Christmas, he would dispose of 365 cases, isn't it? The, the, the number of, therefore, to dispose of 2,000 cases pending now, he needs six or seven years. On the persistent allegations of corruption in the judiciary, Chief Justice Katurebe said the public was contributing to the problem. You should say more correctly, our society is struggling with the problem of corruption. Who is giving bribes to judges and magistrates? The Inspectorate of Government, IG, is probing alleged embezzlement of over 1 billion shillings paid on the accounts of staff in the judiciary and spent without accountability. It is a question of public officers misbehaving and those are being dealt with and can be dealt with. I'm going for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one minute only. Sudil Yaruhanga, NTV.